He hasn't won the Tour de France in three years. And today, Tadej Pogacar took an iron grip on that Mayo Jaune he has had on his shoulders since stage two. A fourth stage win at this Tour de France. A tenth Grand Tour stage win this season alone. If we had questions coming into today, Larry, if we had questions coming in at the start of the Tour de France, they have been answered today, haven't they? I think he pretty much well put this one away, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I mean, as in because we would have liked to see a battle. It's, yeah. you know, it's great for him uh, to win the stage like that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, he definitely answered anyone's questions. And I think we know who's the boss. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he is the boss. And Robbie, he now equals you on career Grand Tour stage wins after that. I hate to remind you, he is only yeah. 25. He's got quite a way to go. But today... E equal, but I don't see him getting any more. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at him now, 10 Grand Tour stage wins this year alone, because I want to put this into context. We've become so used to Tade, as we like to say, doing Tade things. That is more than Alberto Contador won in his entire career. It's more than Jonas Ringogo has won in his entire career. The season alone is enough to make an entire career, and he's still going. It's enough to make about eight or 10 or 12 careers, what he's won this season alone. You know, when you hear of riders, they win one Tour de France stage in their career, and that. I made it. That, yeah. that makes a career. I mean, he just does it time after time after time. He is an absolute phenomenon. Uh, just, I've, I ran out of superlatives, I think, at the end of the Giro. Yeah. Tried to make a few <laughs> other ones up for this race, but now I've run out of even those stupid ones. Yeah, you've got to bow to him, really, Danny. And you have to applaud Bees and Melissa Mike. They have tried everything. They've given it their all. Taddy simply by far the strongest rider in this race. We are witnessing something very special here. These athletes do not come round very often and we have to enjoy it. This Melissa bike did everything they could. It was clear that Jonas did not have the legs. He didn't try on La Bonnette. He couldn't follow on that attack of Tadej Pogacar with 8.7 kilometers to go. This man is in a league of his own. And once again, on the finish line, I mean, we'll get to that moment in just a moment, uh, overtaking Matteo Jorgensen, who I know that you were rooting for, Larry, and many a neutral fan will have been rooting for as well. But that celebration on the line, once again, bringing us the contrast of celebration and devastation. We saw Jonas Vingago being consoled by his wife in pieces, being consoled by his teammate, Matteo Jorgensen, who would have thought he could have been celebrating his first Tour de France stage win. He's devastated, absolutely crushed by this, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, if Tadej keeps doing these uh, salutes like this, he's going to run out of fingers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's hard, you know. I think uh, Vingogo, they were hoping for, you know, to try to go for the win in the Tour de France today, not just the stage. And uh, I think obviously he's devastated because. It looks pretty much over. Yeah. But th that speaks volumes for what a legend Matteo Jorgensen is. Yeah, like, yeah. He's just had a, another crushing defeat. He went close to winning a stage last year in the Tour on the Puy de Dome, just run down within the final kilometre, faded. He, he cracked so badly, ended up fourth from almost getting a stage victory. Now he's seen Pogaccio making another victory salute, yet another one, just 20 seconds in front of him at this mountaintop. But then Jorgensen goes straight to Jonas Vindigo, gives him a pat on the back and says, hey, mate, you, you did your best. I mean, it was, it was great and we're here for you. In his moment where it should probably be the other way around, where you'd expect someone else to come to Jorgensen I mean, and say, I feel for you. Yeah. Just, you know. I'm not sure you'd expect it to be the other way around. I think right. it is very classy of Matteo, but oh, yeah. Jonas obviously coming into this race off the back of devastating injuries, two-time defending champion. Today was a big, big day for him, and I think that really displays just how much they laid on today as well, Danny. Yeah, absolutely. It was all for Jonas. Obviously, Matteo Jorgensen had his opportunity because the gap was so big going into that final climb, and he's a classy bike rider in his own right winner of Paris Nice only eight seconds behind Roglic let's not forget in the Dauphiné only a couple of weeks ago but this you know they've come into this tour with one objective and that is to win the Tour de France and that display that we just saw of Jorgensen is what teammates are for it's not just about the services they offer on the bike it's also off the bike as well when things go good and things don't go to plan lovely